address at some level these requirements that are coming down the pipe. The problem, I think, is is that they don't know how they're addressing, and that's that's the gap. And you're right. You know, the business, the client needs to do their business. They, you know, it's one thing to say we we want you to manage our IT infrastructure. We want to have help desk. We want to have all these services in place. This is taking it to another level because, you know, not only are is the MSP relied upon for that. Now they're going to be relied upon for helping them, you know, determine their own, you know, suitability to these mandates. You know, what what of your services map to this particular requirement? Do I need MFA? Do I need asset tracking? Do I need encryption? Do I need and how do my how does the stack of services that you provide map to those? Because I need that to answer these questionnaires. I need it if I'm going to be audited. Hello, welcome, and thank you for tuning into Channel Voices, the podcast for future channel leaders, where we learn the ins and outs of partner ecosystems through casual conversations with channel professionals from a variety of industries, partner types, and geographies. My name is Maciek, and I'm your host. Cam Robertson, welcome to Channel Voices. Hey, nice to be here. To set the scene, could you tell us a little bit about yourself and how did you get started in channel? Maybe a little bit about your journey. Well, I'd be happy to. How much time do we got? (laughs) (laughs) We'll make time for you. (laughs) Yeah, somewhat accidental magic. I I, um, had an ad agency for for many years, 12, I think, um, where we, you know, help with marketing, messaging, uh, building websites, collateral, uh, writing copy, the, the, the whole gamut. Um, and this company, Beachhead, was a client of mine. And uh, uh, we got to be rather friendly. I think they liked what we did for them. And, you know, sort of a, a couple of circumstances, somebody came and offered me some money to sell my business. And I said, very good. Kind of conveyed that to to my friends at Beachhead and they sort of said, hey, why don't you come, you know, run our marketing group? And I said, hmm, that sounds like a, a pretty good idea. And I did. And everything just sort of happened rather quickly, actually, and uh, found myself uh, marketing for Beachhead Solutions. I, I knew a little bit about the company, of course, but, you know, not so much of, of you know, security services, SaaS services. But, you know, turned out I really enjoyed it. Well, uh, I don't want to go on too long, but Beachhead used to sell direct. We sold direct okay. and we sold uh, our product uh, as a prepaid subscription. It wasn't a monthly consumption-based model. And we sold direct to to enterprise and medium-sized business and small businesses. And then, you know, through the course of that, and, and I started having more responsibility with, with respect to selling sales, we, we had recruited a, a reseller of our, uh, a, a company that sold mostly hardware, but they had a particular client that needed our service. And, uh, you know, one after another, they started bringing in clients. Well, uh, and, you know, we sold to them, they, you know, went a discount and they marked it up and it was a prepaid, you know, subscription for one or three years or whatnot. And then something happened. They they started telling me that the purchase order was going to be coming from a finance company. I said, mm, okay. And, you know, come to find out they were actually financing the product for their for their for their customers as if it were a capital right. asset. And so I, you know, it sort of clicked with me. Oh, okay. So they're making monthly payments and they're handling accounting a little bit different. And so that was that sort of epiphany. And then uh, we, we sort of learned about this MSP space. And uh, I I can remember it so distinctly. And this goes back, gosh, I want to say 10 years, going to a, a show, happened to be an ASCII member show, and learning of this entire community of MSPs with relationships selling to small and medium-sized business. Oh, holy mackerel, this is 
this is perfect for us. <laughs> um, and so we, within a, the course of about six months, transformed our entire product to, to be a monthly consumption-based model selling to MSPs. That's how I, <laughs> that's the long story as to how I got into the channel. Perfect. Unlike others on the podcast that I have hosted and from, you know, my own experience and knowing people in the channel, a lot of them ended up in the channel by, by just how, how, how the life went, how the, how the job offers came about or how their career progression happened, right? Typically through sales or marketing. Right, yeah. and that's how people end up in, cha in in channel. Yeah, um, it's not always like that, but but it comes down to the fact that there's so little knowledge still about channel, even though seventy five percent of world trade goes through channel, right? Yeah, there still seems to be, you know, it's still still a little bit of an enigma to um to people that are not directly involved with partnerships and and channel or ecosystems in overall right yeah no I, I think that's that's true I, I i certainly had no intention of you know i'm going to pursue the channel for my career it just it just sort of happened and and in many respects we 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 sort of built our product to adapt to the channel because we we believe it's such a good fit for for our service and for our platform so yes it's, it's a, certainly was not a a plan but i'm glad it worked out the way it did i for me channel's been just a wonderful experience really fantastic really yeah today's topic and you already mentioned msps and adapting the product for the for the msps so as much as i am aware of msps and what they do today's discussion is more around the compliance regulations that msps really need to pay attention to and that's a topic that I don't have a lot of knowledge of. So I will be asking you quite a, quite a few questions here for me to, to, to clarify for me certain things. Yeah. But um, you did give me a little bit of literature to, um, to read on. And there are, you know, there are some challenges that MSPs commonly face um, from what I read um, when dealing with regulations. And, you know, there's been mentioned of CMMC 2.0, NIST, FTC safeguards, HIPAA. I mean, these are these are terms that don't mean much to me. I hope that the listeners will already have some knowledge around this, and if not, um, we'll point them to into in the right direction where to read up on that. But what are the key challenges, I suppose? that MSPs commonly face when dealing with these type of regulations? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. I'll, I'll tell you that it, for me, if you if we'd had this conversation six months ago, I would not have been able to, to discuss it at great, at great length with you. It's been baptism by fire and, and, you know, it, it's coming hard and fast. And what I've learned is that these regulations are already in place. And sort of, you know, I felt a tremendous need to get versant quickly. And I, I think the same is true with with our MSP community. Um, it, it's just happening so fast. And while I don't, you know, while I certainly can appreciate the workload that an MSP has uh, as a business owner, I think this is something they need to be prepared for. Uh, because it's coming. It's already here. I, I'm guessing your listeners have been approached by their clients with um, getting help with a supply chain questionnaire if they're if they're doing government work, for instance. Yeah. Or or maybe a, a list of check boxes of things I need to have in place for cybersecurity insurance. Both of which are are derived largely from some of the mandates that are coming down the pipe. Some of which have been in place for a long time. HIPAA, for instance, kind of the bellwether of, of you know here in the states, anyway. Um, but more and more frequently, we're seeing uh, the emergence of uh, FTC safeguards and CMMC two compliance being required, and 
you know, FTC in particular, which just, you know, finally got uh, in its final implementation in June, actually, uh, they're, uh, they're being quite aggressive and, and probably for, for, for very good reason, because there are a lot of people, uh, first of all, it, it applies to a whole swath of businesses, perhaps millions in the, in the U.S., um, but they're also going after some, some egregious, you know, security uh, or lack of security minded firms. Um, you may have seen some of the, the press around car dealerships. And we have a lot of, of, mm-hmm. uh, of our partners who are, you know, scrambling, trying to get car dealerships uh, up and running. Some, some real horror stories, frankly. But HIPAA has, has morphed into and, and produced a, a recent uh, publication that provides a bunch more specificity to the requirements there. They are including all of these more and more discussion about MSPs, realizing that with small and medium-sized businesses, they're reliant a lot of times on the expertise of the MSP. And so they're bringing the discussion to include them, including guidance on how to find an MSP qualified to assist with with these mandates. And so um, this is this is coming. You know, my hope is is that that MSPs really embrace this, both because you don't want to be embarrassed when your client comes and says, "Hey, I need help with being CMMC compliant," but also, you know, we. I could go into to, to marketing strategies. I empathize with our, our MSP community about how to distinguish, differentiate their offering. But uh, it does represent an opportunity to really be cutting edge in terms of knowledge, document documentation, being able to map the, the services that you provide to those that are required for these various mandates and so forth. So, uh, you know, it's coming. It's already here. It's both a you know intimidating, um, but also a, um, a, a a tremendous opportunity. I think. And I suppose it's fair to say that you know the companies reach out to MSPs for help, not only to you know manage some of the the things that they don't necessarily specialize in, but also rely on them when it comes to their knowledge of these types of regulations, right? Right. They just want to concentrate on their own product, on their own business, and the things that they're not very well versed in, they want to um they want somebody else to come in and help with that. Right. Right. So with with that in mind, I suppose what are some of the trends or the insight that you might be able to offer? What do MSPs need to be aware of right now that might, you know, elevate them? As a as a company and offer something in addition to maybe some to something that they're not offering today. Yeah, I I you know the the funny thing is I I believe magic that most of them are offering a a, a comprehensive suite of of services that address at some level these requirements that are coming down the pipe. The problem I think is is that they don't know how they're addressing, and that's that's the gap. And you're right. You know, the business, the client needs to do their business. They, you know, it's one thing to say, we, we want you to manage our IT infrastructure. We want to have help desk. We want to have all these services in place. This is taking it to another level because, you know, not only are is the MSP relied upon for that, now they're going to be relied upon for helping them, you know, determine their own you know, suitability to these mandates, you know, what, what of your services map to this particular requirement? Do I need MFA? Do I need asset tracking? Do I need encryption? Do I need, and how do my, how does the stack of services that you provide map to those? Because I need that to answer these questionnaires. I need it if I'm going to be audited. And so I don't know if I'm answering your question, but, but you know, it's kind of another thing. And I, as I mentioned before, I, you know, I don't take this lightly. I know this is a fair amount of work for the MSP and it's additional work, but again, it's, it's an opportunity. And and there is some good news. There's some silver lining on this because I've gone through this exercise myself. There is a whole bunch more similar with these various mandates than there is dissimilar. And so, 
you know, good security is good security. And most of them ask for, with slight variations, the same sort of things. And um, once somebody understands the controls in the language of the compliancy mandates, and they have a pretty good sense of where they stack up for a, on FTC safeguards, for instance, they're going to be in a much better position to adapt and help clients with CMMC and HIPAA and so forth. So there's some rather good news. And I, I think, you know, that uh, I think it presents an opportunity. In fact, I've, I've heard from several that say, you know, this could be the next big demand driver for, for our community is compliance and how to get compliance. So I think it represents, you know, a good opportunity to get ahead of it for those who are <laughs> going to spend the work early. The other thing is, you know, we'd certainly not like to see them lose business because if, if they come to their MSP client, you know, partner and say, look, I, I need help with getting FTC compliant and they don't have the answers, you know, I think the, I think possibility of them finding either the, another MSP luring them away or them looking for somebody that can help them is pretty high. Obviously, security and compliance are such huge topics in today's business world, right? Because, yes, you are going to be audited. I mean, there's no doubt about that, right? In some point in time, you will be audited. Right. You need to have your house in order. Security, it's so important because one piece of bad press, you know, something breached, it might destroy a company, yep. right? In today's terms, I mean, that, that that is huge and security is absolutely everywhere. It doesn't matter what type of business you run. IT is everywhere. Digital is everywhere. That's why security is so important. I was, I'm thinking about your, 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 your answer that you were given just there. You know, you said there's there's opportunities. There's that silver lining. Do you see MSPs potentially, some of them, right, evolving into something else, into being more of the on the compliance side mm -hmm. rather than just providing the services, yeah. right? Because that's an interesting topic. MSPs are growing as 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 a whole as a community. It's probably one of the fastest growing type of a partner in the channel today. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So. With all of that in mind, I mean, what opportunities are there for MSPs and are they going to morph into something completely different than what they do today? Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a fantastic question. And this was sort of a, another epiphany I had eight months ago. I was at a show and I had a couple of our partners, MSP partners, amongst others. It, this was sort of an eye-opening experience for me, but come to me and say, look, we are we are actually going to be providing compliance services, either have spun off a, 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 you know, a separate organization or are providing it within the, you know, within the framework of their current uh, company. Uh, one of them is actually an authorizing agency for, or is in pursuit of being an authorize, authorizing agency for CMMC. So there's all kinds of different levels, but it is absolutely a direction. And I think, again, a way to distinguish, differentiate your practice or build a new business because it absolutely needs it in the marketplace. Um, I, I just think there's, you know, we MSPs as a rule understand the technology. Certainly they understand security. It's, it's taken a next level and being able to understand how that maps to what is required of these clients. But yeah, there is a, you know, and that at a minimum needs to be, in my opinion, done. Right? MSP needs to understand how they map to those mandates. And if there's a hole or a gap uh, to add the products that will fill that gap, either as a standard service or maybe just put in the bullpen for when these requirements come to be. But, um, you know, we, like I said, I, I eight months ago, I knew very little of this. We had this epiphany. I didn't know much, but I've taken a, upon myself. I still don't consider myself an expert. I'll, I'll name names if, if given the opportunity of people in our space who know a whole bunch more than I and can be of assistance, I think, to, to many of your, your, your uh, listeners. But um, I didn't know much. And I, I took it upon myself because they, they told me that our product checked a lot of the boxes that were required. 
So I may have mentioned this in our, our back and forth emails. We built a, um, over the last few months, a compliancy guide, an MSP compliancy guide. Mm -hmm. And again, I've learned, but we've had contributions from from John DePero of Visibility MSP, uh, from Paul, who's an expert in FTC compliance. He's taught me so much. HIPAA, uh, Paul Redding with the Compliancy Group. I've, I've known him for years. He used to be a partner, an MSP partner of ours. He is without question the most knowledgeable person about the HIPAA security and privacy rules, what needs to happen. Uh, Aaron Wyant with Dispatch Tech down in San Diego, I mentioned is pursuing the the authorizing agency for CMMC. Those guys uh, contributed to this compliancy guide, um, and I'd be happy to provide that to to you or to your listeners. You know, listeners. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. We can we have the ability to put on some of those links and the names in the in the show notes so people can read up on this a little bit further. Perfect. As you were talking, I, I started laughing to myself because I recall when I when we opened up the conversation, I called it HIPAA, but it seems like the standard is to pronounce it HIPAA, right? Yeah. So <laughs> apologies to everybody who's listening and they knew about this and they were laughing. Anyhow, a bit of humor. Well, yeah, we, a lot of times we go, you know, spell it HIPPA and it's actually HIPAA. <laughs> <laughs> so so you talked about the the experts that helped you develop that framework let's call it right the and when you got to know a little bit about it and were pursuing to grab that knowledge i wanted to ask you you know where what are the watering holes apart from the people that you spoke to i mean the best thing to learn is to surround yourself with the subject matter experts, right? And that's how you then that's how you learn. But if you don't have access to this, and you really want to go and learn about this stuff, either as an MSP or or a company that is thinking about bringing an, an MSP on to help them, what type of questions do they need to ask, like they need to educate themselves a little bit first. And the second part of the question is, so the first one is, where do you get that knowledge? Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And the second part is how often do these regulations change? Do they get how often do they get updated and how can MSPs stay on top of that? Yeah, it's a good question. I probably and, you know, with FTC, for instance, you, you've got to assign a, a resource or partial resource to be, you know, sort of full time on, on this and to be up on the changes and, you know, implementation and, you know, care and feeding of, of this there are services available also, uh, you know, in fact, the, the, the folks that I just mentioned are providing those services. And, and a lot of times that might be the right answer for a smaller MSP that doesn't have internal mm -hmm. resources, uh, a quicker way to get to that, uh, to that point. Um, as far as understanding it, I, yeah, that's a tough one. You know, peer groups certainly um, leverage those, those folks because peer groups are in incredibly important and and have a lot of resources uh, if not at the, the the head of the group then certainly with their members some people are going to be more versant on on these topics than others the the other maybe recommendation is if you were to you know the government uh, documentation has really improved quite a bit it used to be cut and dry and almost unreadable. Yeah. And, uh, and you know, like HIPAA, for instance, used to be really loose guidance, you know, relied upon the the reader to, to ultimately implement a security plan and defend it and document it and, and be sure that it was in place. And, but a lot of times it was for you to, to explain why. The, the documentation has become much more readable and understandable and specific. And, and like with HIPAA, for instance, they recently developed, uh, I think it's HICP publication. And that's commonly referred to as HICCUP. So, so you got HIC, HIPAA now. Okay. Now the next one's HICCUP. And that document is like, you know, almost like a how-to manual. There's 
images and, you know, little cartoons, <laughs> things. And it's like, here's what you need to do. And by the way, as I mentioned before, give this to your MSP and be sure that they understand how to do this. And as well, if you're going to be using an outside service for this, make sure that they qualify and look for these yeah. items. So again, they're, they're recognizing that MSPs are integral to this uh, process, uh, but they're suggesting who's qualified and who's not. And so if you're qualified, you know, you'll get that business. If you're not, you may lose it. And so that's why I say it's important, I think, to, to sort of get ahead of it. Question number two. Yeah, they change. You know, I think what's I, I think they're getting more specific and saying, okay, you know, rather than authentication control, we want multi-factor authentication. You know, we're not going to leave it to your interpretation of what authentication control is. We right. want this thing specifically in place, which, by the way, is kind of one of the things that that's really <laughs> pissing off the FTC uh, auditors because people don't like it. People aren't implementing it. Um I I don't see them changing a lot, even from, you know, a few years ago. But as technology changes and the threats landscape changes, yeah, you know, we're adding items to it. But but ultimately, if you say, you know, asset control or asset uh, access control, those those functions, while they may, def you know, change with the advent of new technologies or with new threats, they're pretty much, th that part of it is consistent. Um, and again, the, the documentation online, those pr produced by the agencies, by the government, are really getting better. Not to make it sound like it's nothing. There, There is, you, you do need to stay on top of it. And somebody needs right. to do it. it it's, it's a burden. I hate to say it, but it is also, you know, as, as mentioned, a a a terrific opportunity to to get ahead of it and distinguish your offering, which is a challenge for for our MSP community. You know how to differentiate the value that I provide. Uh, we don't want it to be based on pricing. Please don't do that. Uh, do it on the basis of of providing more value, more expertise, more thought leadership, more knowledge for your clients. Right. So I suppose the risk of an MSP today not concentrating on these regulations, these these compliances, it might actually put them at risk in terms with their own clients, right? Because those demands are going to rise and rise. The clients are going to get smarter about this as well, and we'll be looking for MSPs that offer that service, that you know, that additional value apart from the, the regular services that they would typically provide, right? Yeah, I think so. I mean, you know, MSPs are, are all out there and, and talking to clients and maybe your clients too. <laughs> and you certainly don't want to have somebody uh, approach your client and say, yeah, well, gee, uh, how does your client do with your, you know, regulated by FTC? Is your MSP uh, able to help you with that? Are they... Uh, able to assist with your cybersecurity insurance questionnaire? Are they, oh, they're not? <laughs> it, it, op it opens the, you know, the door for them to take your client away. So, you know, at worst case, I mean, that that's kind of a worst case scenario. At, at best case, it's, it's a bit embarrassing not to have questions if they come to you and you've got a tremendous relationship with them. The best case scenario is you're a little embarrassed, have to catch up, get those answers. Um, worst case scenario is, you know, maybe before you even know it, they're 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 somewhere else because they need this service, and you're not in a position to help them. In terms of resources, additional resources or tools, I suppose, for MSPs or maybe even just people who are interested in this topic, is there anything that you would that you would recommend? you know, so they can understand how to implement, you know, compliance regulations effectively? Yeah, I, I you know, I mentioned those guys. Uh, they're, 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 they're very helpful. Know a whole bunch more about the, 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 you know, the very details 
of, of uh, compliance. I can, I can share with you what I did, Magic. Um, and for us, it, it's been very useful. And, and in fact, the, the big difference between these things, as I mentioned, there's more similar than there is dissimilar, right? The, 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 there are two big differences if you go from one compliance mandate to the other. The, one is nomenclature. You know, some, some might call it data sanitization. Mm-hmm. Some may say, you know, expunge or kill outdated or no, no longer useful data. Um, so the, the nomenclature changes. The organization changes, you know, different ways of, of promoting it, different orders. And if you, if you go to try and satisfy or map your services against one, you're going to and do it serially. It's going to be a tremendous amount of work because there are, they're different, different terms, different all. What, what we did, I'm not saying this is perfect. We settled on an organization structure for us. The most sort of common guidance is the NIST cybersecurity framework, CSF, a lot of mm-hmm. people call it. It's organized in, uh, you know, seven different categories. Gosh, I, I'd like to remember where they identify, protect, detect, respond, and recover. That's sort of the organizational structure. Um, what we did for our product, uh, we mapped our controls in that fashion against the NIST cybersecurity framework. We did that before we did anything else. Then we mapped those in a, if it, <laughs> I'm describing it verbally here, it's a little bit difficult, but if you think of a, of a spreadsheet, mm-hmm. we then mapped those controls into the controls of the specific mandates. We had a column for CMMC one and two, we had a column and it's easier to do that way. You've got the framework, it's consistent. Now you're mapping it to the to the uh, specific controls required of the various mandates. Um, I, you know, I think that's, for us, it worked well. I, I would offer to anybody out there that that might be a good starting point for them. If an MSP wants to sort of begin assessing and, and mapping and documenting their controls, I could provide the raw spreadsheet files and if they wanted to, you know, and then if they use Beachhead, fantastic, they got a head start. If they don't, though, they can at least use our information to see how we mapped it to that particular thing and then take the rest of their stack and services and do the same thing. Right. Um, It worked for us. You know, we we used it to build a, a, a matrix within that compliancy guide that I mentioned. Uh, and I think it made good sense for us. Um, I think it would also apply to, to MSPs who are interested in, in moving in that direction. So uh, uh, you know, that might be helpful. Be happy to help in any way I can. Those other guys, um, extremely knowledgeable. And I know them personally now, especially over the last six months. They're good guys. They'd be happy to help, even if it weren't in the pursuit of you know, dollars in business. Right. They're just good guys. They, they're they really forthright and helpful. Um, they taught me a, a ton. Perfect. So instead of um, you giving that those documents um, to me, I believe the best thing to do would be for people to reach out to you maybe on LinkedIn We'll have the link to your LinkedIn profile in the in the show notes. Okay. So, are people okay to reach out to you directly? Uh, yeah, you know, I'm. Uh, I, I'm. I have a presence, obviously, on LinkedIn. I LinkedIn reminds me of work, so <laughs> I'd be even better. And so, as a result, I don't check it all that frequently. I'm happy to have my email shared as well. Okay, perfect. So we'll include that in the uh, in the show notes. Okay. Thank you for that. And then, obviously, we did talk a little bit about how you, for a lack of a better word, fell into the channel. Yeah. Right? What's the one thing you wish you knew before you started your channel career? Well, I would have I gotten into it sooner, I think. I, I, <laughs> honest to God, this is a, this is a, a great place to be. I, and I, I don't know why. The people in it are very, very cool. 
and I'm by cool, what do I mean? But you know, helpful, like guys like I mentioned, like I, I've never seen a, a a place where competitors help each other out and chat and are friendly. You know, we we have all these shows, magic that we go to, and you know, everybody's got a smile on their face. Everybody's in seemingly enjoying their their careers. Um, you know, for us. Uh, we, we don't have the ability to, you know, approach huge numbers of people. And so we, we leverage MSPs who are smart, ambitious business people, uh, who've developed relationships with their end clients. I can easily reach out to those folks or more easily and let them, you know, do what's right for their client base again, they have those relationships. I hope they'll keep those relationships as they, you know, we go through this process of, of compliancy. Thank you so much for educating me and hopefully some of, some of our listeners on all of these, well, very, very complex compliance regulations. Obviously MSPs are going to evolve further right? and time will only tell where, where they're going to end up, what kind of a, uh, um, what kind of business will they be running? Because, like I said, I think they're possibly one of the fastest growing type of partner in the industry. Yeah. So it'll be really fantastic to see what is it that they're going to develop into in the in the near and the in the far future as well. Yeah. Yeah. I. Yeah. I, it it will be interesting, and and um, you know those who who get on board sooner, I think, are going to be in a better position to grow their business. Cam, thank you so, so much for joining me on Channel Voices today. Um, we'll obviously keep in touch yeah. as it is, as we're both in the channel. Those relationships typically last. Yep. So um, hope to be speaking with you in the future as well. Yeah, absolutely. Magic. It's been my, uh, my pleasure. And yeah, I look forward to uh, continued conversations. And that's a wrap for this episode. I do hope you found it valuable and if you did, please make sure to subscribe and leave a review. You can also follow Channel Voices podcast on LinkedIn, Twitter and Facebook. Or just visit channelvoices.com where you can send me a message or leave a voicemail. All of the links are listed in the show notes. And once again, I appreciate you tuning in today. Until next time.